In one of our last videos, we learned about the basics of differential amplifiers. These are circuits that can amplify the difference of their input voltages and are therefore very important for the input stage of operational amplifiers and comparators. To fully understand differential amplifiers and to be able to use them in practice, it is important to know how to derive the most important formulas for differential mode and common mode gain. In this video, we will therefore learn some tricks and simplifications that will make our lives easier. To make it simple, let's use the circuit we discussed in our last video about differential amplifiers. For those who missed that video, I have put the link in the video description. Before we start with the derivations, let's have another short look at the circuit itself. Our differential amplifier circuit has two inputs, two outputs and needs a symmetrical supply voltage. We use the resistor RS as a simple current source, which is located at the shared source terminal of our two common source amplifiers. The circuit needs to be symmetrical, so we need to use same size drain resistors and the same NMOS transistor for both halves. We have already learned that for differential amplifiers it is useful to define two different types of input voltages namely the common mode voltage and the differential mode voltage. In order to split each possible input voltage into these two voltages, we need to define them first. We define the common mode voltage as one half of the sum of our two input voltages. The differential mode voltage will be the difference between input voltages 1 and 2. This distinction is important when we are working with real differential amplifiers, since their common mode gain is unfortunately not zero. Our new definitions allow us to calculate the common mode gain as well as the differential mode gain of our differential amplifier. These two values in combination with the common mode and differential mode voltage allow us to calculate the real output voltage of our circuit. For a practical example, we will start with the calculation of the differential mode gain. As a first step, we need to draw the small signal equivalent circuit of our differential amplifier. If you are not sure how to do this, we highly recommend to watch our video on small signal equivalent circuits, which is linked in the video description. Let's check out what we can simplify for this calculation. Assuming that for small signals the voltage change is the same on both sides of the circuit but in opposite directions, we can assume that our current IS remains nearly constant. This means that there is no small signal current through the resistor RS and thus no small signal voltage drop. Therefore, we consider RS to be a short and use a small signal ground connection instead. Knowing this, we can redraw our small signal equivalent circuit. The small signal gain we want to calculate is defined as the division of our output voltage by our differential mode input voltage. Since our circuit is symmetrical, we will only look at the left half of the circuit for now. To find the formula for the ratio of the left output and input voltage, we need to define a node and then apply Kirchhoff's law. We get an equation that contains the output and input voltage. Now we just need to rearrange the formula to get the relationship we are looking for. When we apply the same steps to the right half of the circuit, we get the same equation but with the other input and output voltage. The resulting formula for the differential mode gain now depends on the input and output voltages under consideration. Furthermore, we can simplify our equations by remembering that both halves of the circuit are identical, which means that our drain resistors, small signal resistors and transconductances are also identical. 
If we want to know the gain of the output voltage difference, we get an equation containing the term input voltage 2 subtracted from input voltage 1. Thinking back to our definition of the differential mode voltage, this term should look very familiar to us. If we now use this differential mode voltage, we can rearrange the equation to get the formula we are looking for. As a final simplification, we neglect RDS for our calculations, since it is much larger than RD and therefore does not make a big difference to our numerical result. So our final equation for the differential mode gain in this case is astoundingly simple and only depending on Gm and Rd. When we change the order of the output voltages, we get the same equation for our differential mode gain, but with a different sign. Considering only one output and both input voltages results in a factor of 0.5 in our equation. Regardless of which inputs and outputs we consider, we still need to find an expression for Gm. Gm is defined as the derivative of Id with respect to Vgs. We must be careful to use the correct equation for Id here, since our MOSFETs are operated in a saturation region. Now we have all the necessary equations to calculate the differential mode gain of our differential amplifier. But enough with the differential mode, let's take a closer look at the common mode. As said before, the common mode gain is non-zero for real-world differential amplifiers. To find out how large it is, we need to find an equation that gives the ratio between one of our output voltages and the common mode input voltage. Let's look at our small signal equivalent circuit from before, where we only consider the right half. We can see that the output voltage drops at the resistor Rd. This voltage drop is caused by the drain current of our MOSFET. Similar to the differential mode gain calculations, we can neglect the small signal resistance RDS here because it is a lot larger than Rd. To find an equation for the common mode gain, we now use Ohm's law to get a formula for our output voltage as a first step. We can see that our common mode output voltage largely depends on the change in the current Id, which is non-zero in real-world applications. But how large is the real change of Id in our circuit? It's simple. The change in Id is half of the change in Is. That's because we assume our circuit to be symmetrical, and therefore the constant current Is must also split symmetrically. If we look at our circuit again, we see that this constant current Is depends on the source voltage Vs and the source resistor Rs. Since Rs is constant, any change in Is has to come from a change in Vs. We use this to introduce our common mode voltage into the equation. Our approach here is to assume that Vgs is constant and consequently our small signal Vgs is zero. Therefore, we assume the small signal voltage drop across the resistor Rs to be equal to the small signal common mode input voltage. With this substitution and by rearranging the resulting equation, we get our final formula for the common mode gain. But why can we even assume that our small signal common mode input voltage drops across Rs? To answer this, we have to look at the small signal voltage changes of our MOSFET when Is changes. More precisely, we look at the small signal changes of the voltages Vgs and Vs. In order to confirm our assumption that our small signal common mode input voltage is equal to the voltage drop across Rs, the small signal voltage change of Vs with respect to Is would have to be much larger than the small signal voltage change of Vgs with respect to Is. If this is the case, we can neglect the latter. If we now insert values from a typical MOSFET into the two formulas to check our assumption, 
we can see that this is the case. Therefore, we can confirm our assumption and the formula for the common mode gain from before is valid. Now we have found all the formulas we need to calculate the real output voltage of our differential amplifier. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. To find an equation for the real output voltage of a differential amplifier, we need to calculate the common mode and differential mode gain. To do so, we use some assumptions, tricks and basic laws of electrical engineering. By substituting and rearranging our basic equations, we are finally able to find the searched formula for the real output voltage of our circuit. I'm Clara with the Institute of Electronics. I hope you have learned something today. But anyways, thanks for watching. For the interested viewer, we highly recommend The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill and for our German-speaking viewers, Elektronische Schaltungstechnik, written by members of our institute.